go to do 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 there. Three. <coughs> Okay, so I've just been talking for like 30 seconds or something, and my mic was on mute. Okay, so what I was saying is, welcome to StarCraft Happy Hour, Episode 7. Um, we are going to be looking at some really nice Nidus Rush games that were sent in by our subscribers, namely Anguish and Ryan. Awesome guys, thank you for sending them in. Um, been sitting on a couple of them for a long time, I was hoping to kind of get one of you guys on, maybe on Skype, to kind of talk us through it, since you guys know what you're doing, but my, our software stuff is kind of not up to, up to scratch yet, so, unfortunately, we're just going to have to watch it with my knowledge, which isn't very much, so hopefully you guys will learn something maybe very, very small, and we'll have a whole lot of fun. Thanks for coming by. I'm going to load up the first replay. Um, if you guys are in the chat, if you're on Twitch... Uh, please say hi. If you have any questions or any suggestions, anything you feel like saying, um, let's go to do 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 one. All right, here we are. We have teleported into StarCraft. Um, yeah, if you're in the chat, please say hi. If you're not in the chat and you're on uh, YouTube checking this out, then uh, thank you for dropping by SC2 Mistakes, where you learn from our mistakes. And uh, come by every Monday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time if you want to hang out, watch live, and uh, let us know what you think. Okay, so what we're looking for right now, I have it uh, set for Episode 7. Okay, we're going to start off with this one here. Let's load this guy up. Load. Alright. So this first uh, replay that we're going to be taking a look at is a uh, replay sent in to us by a good friend of mine named Ryan. His... Uh, online is I don't know my ID and in this game we see he's going up against Rafik who is a uh, Protoss player little bad manner there that's okay I don't know my idea it ID is a solid solid guy he doesn't get upset so in the bottom left in the red we have Rafik the Protoss and in the top left we have I don't know my ID, and he's blue. I think he's blue. Yeah, he's blue. All right, cool. So uh, most of these games are going to be really, really short. I think we're probably going to go through about two games, and then we're going to stop for the play of the week, and then maybe grab two more games after that, if we have time, see what, how much time we have. But these are very, very short games because they are a Nidus Rush. So we're going to kind of try and see what we can learn, how to maybe defend against the Nidus Rush, and also how it was executed. Uh, first of all, we see both of our players. I'm going to actually speed up just a little bit. Both of our players are sending out their early scout. This is a four-player uh, map, so we have to do scouts in all four positions. Um, now, Rafik is making a very generally smart decision. This... Uh, I forget what map this is. I think this is like, uh... Ah, shoot, I forget. Anyway. It's not a map I enjoy. I don't like it very much. Uh, but he's doing a forge fast expand. Um... Now, I do want to kind of look at his cam just for a second because we want to see what he discovers when he runs in. Okay, so, he knows there's no fast expand. We're at the three minute mark, 3.30. 
no fast expansion from our Zerg player. Um, if you don't see a... Let's slow that down just a little bit. If you don't see a fa Oh, sorry, what the heck did I just do, guys? Sorry about that. Okay, he's going down. Yeah, he's dead. Alright. So, if you don't see... Like, it seems pretty in the metagame now. It seems very, very common for any uh, Zerg player that's not going for a one-base kind of cheese play uh, to generally take that that expansion very, very quickly. Uh, some people go f uh, one hatch, like just right off the bat. Um, but if you get there at around the three and a half minute mark, there's no uh, no expansion. Mm, you gotta start wondering what your opponent's up to. So, I think when you're scouting against a Zerg player who, at first, it seems is not fast expanded, the a good thing to do is keep an eye on when that expansion goes down. But the number two thing to look for is this right here. That. That, my friends, is a lair. Now, uh, if you're not a Zerg player, you might find it hard to identify or, or even know exactly what each building means in their, uh, in their base. I mean, the gases are obvious, but a lair, it just looks like an upgraded hatch. It's got, you know, bigger spikes, it's a little taller, but what it allows you to do is build a Nidus network. So we can see here that Ryan went as soon as he got his lair, he's throwing down a Nidus. Okay? So if you ever scout your opponent, let's say you even run in with a worker, you see a lair on one base, you might be getting some cheesy little, uh, some fun little play here from our Captain Nidus. Look at that. That's cool. Alright. So let's head back into the base of our opponent. We see a Nidus has gone down at the top. It is natural. Right here. It's spitting out them lings. Are we going to see a double Nidus? So we're getting some worker kills there. Sorry, I just want to see if we... Okay, more reinforcements come with the lings. I don't think we even need another Nidus. I think these lings... Yeah, they cleaned everything up. Everything goes down. Okay, so... Uh, Rafik really didn't do anything uh, too... Uh, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, Rafik didn't do anything that was, like, crazy bad. Uh, the only thing that I would really recommend that I really look for when I'm um, playing against a Zerg opponent is uh, your Forge Fast Expand, that's fine, go ahead and do it. But it's always a good idea to use an early, early probe because if you see, for example, like I said, if you see that your opponent is on one base and he's a Zerg player, chances are he's probably going to go cheese you. Um, that means you're going to get really hard with like maybe a roach timing or something like that. Um, so even based on that simple information that he had at the three and a half minute mark, uh, he, it should have set off some alarm bells and he should have thought, oh crap, something's coming down the pipe. Uh, number two was being aware of when your opponent has, a, has upgraded his hatch to a lair. Because as soon as that lair tech goes down, he's able to start nidusing. So that was a nice little warm-up. We're going to go take a look at a game by, uh, one, of our, by one of our mentors at sc2mistakes.com, Anguish, who's been with us from the very beginning when sc2mistakes was this little tiny baby, and he's helped us to grow up to be like, like this big or something. I don't know. Anyways, he's been a lot of help, and we're going to show you some of his awesome play here. Um... We're gonna take so that was a that was a ZVP. We're gonna look at I think our first one is a ZVT. Hey, there's Ryan as we speak. He is on. Uh, he is playing the game and he's not watching StarCraft Happy Hour. Naughty, naughty. All right, so let's pull up the next one. All right, so sorry, I'm just looking through my replays here. Okay, episode seven A. There we are. Load her up. Oh, that's not it. There we go. Okay, so again, this I, I'm pretty sure this is, this is a ZVT. Our hero in this game is going to be Anguish. Uh, he's going to be Nidus rushing again. Here you go, yes. So this is a little different. Um, so, okay, the, obviously the mechanics in, in Terran or Protoss for scouting are different. But I think a lot of the lessons that we learned in the last game 
can be applied to this game. Now, uh, I'm just going to say this. Based on scouting, this is a master player. Feed Me is in Masters League at this time. Uh, but his scouting could use some improvement. That's my personal opinion. So let's introduce our players. We have in the top right, Feed Me, the Red Terran. In the bottom left, in the blue trunks, we have J-Ran, or Anguish as we know him at SC2 Mistakes. So let's take a look at... I want to watch, first of all, I mean... Well, I think what we're going to do is for our third video, we're going to talk about how to... Nidus Rush, and for this video and the last one, we're going to talk a bit about how to scout a uh, possible Nidus, to, just to get an idea that it might be coming. Um, pretty standard uh, opening out of uh, out of Feed Me for sure. He's going for his uh, wall off, throwing down a bunker, and notice again uh, Anguish or Jran is very good at actively scouting with his initial with a very early early uh, sorry an early drone and you might kinda be wondering well if he's just gonna Nidus rush anyway uh, what what difference does it make why is he doing all the scouting the answer is because scouting wins games and his decision making might totally change depending on what this little Drony found out. On the other hand, let's take a look at the cams of both of our players. This is the Feed Me cam. Notice how dark the majority of the map is. We're almost at the three minute mark and he doesn't even know if his opponent has expanded or not. On the other hand, Anguish has a very good idea of what's going on in this map. He's ready to find out whenever the opponent Feed Me takes his expansion. Now, Feed Me actually is taking this expansion and sending out one Marine. This is extremely risky. This is extremely risky. If he would have sent out a worker after maybe, say, putting down his barracks, sent out the worker, he would know at about, by now at least, that uh, J-Ran has not taken an expansion. He would know that. So... A one basing Zerg is going to destroy this, or be tricky in some way, right? So I think he really needed to send out that early, um, that early worker to find out a little bit more information. Um, I'm not sure if he can do scans yet. Let's take a look at his base. Yes, he can. So I, I guess the other thing I would say is if you don't have a worker to scout with, why not use a scan? Throwing down a scan right here would tell him that he's going for Lair Tech. And if he's going for Lair Tech, and he's on one base, you might be getting Onidus. Right? Okay. But he didn't do that. So we're now at the 5 minute mark. Let's take a look at his camera again. Notice at the 5 minute mark he has... The only information this scout is giving our player, Feed Me, is that Anguish has not taken 5 bases. <laughs> That's pretty much it. And we're going to watch, I think, I wonder what time he actually scouts his base. I mean, like, he doesn't even know. He does not even know yet if Anguish has taken the... Fr okay, here we go. So he just scanned Anguish. He sees that he's morphing into Lair Tech, so alarm bells really should be going off in his head. The only thing is, he, I still don't think he knows if he's expanded or not, and that is vital information. Alright, so again, uh, Nidus can be laid down wherever the uh, Zerg player has vision. So we have two possible locations. We have this uh, Overlord here. And on the left of Feed Me's base, we have an Overlord here. Um, building now, since he has his lair finished, his Nidus network is going down. And there it is. And he's getting ready with his army. Getting ready to go. I think I'm going to pause it right here for one quick second. Uh, because I just want to tell you guys what kind of costs are involved here. And this game is going to be over pretty quickly. So, um, let's say you want to build a Nidus network, right? So a Nidus network costs... <laughs> Hold on. I'll, be the, I'll get it, I'll get it. But you guys want to know this stuff because it makes a difference. If you're shutting down uh, Nidus worms, 
you got to know how much you're putting your Zerg opponent behind. Okay, so to build a Nidus network would cost a Zerg player 150. Well, this may, this may be updated, but it was 150 minerals and 200 gas. Then to throw down a worm is 100 minerals and 100 gas. So if you're uh, paying attention to your opponent, to your Zerg player, and he's dropping Nidus worms in your base, then you know every time you shut down a Nidus worm, he just lost 100 100. So that really puts him behind. And if he's on one base, then <clears throat> you're going to have a big economic lead. So let's go ahead and hit the play button again. Uh, this Nidus network is almost finished. Let's see if we can... So we're, I want to look at his his camera here. So this is the dead zone right here. He does not have any vision of it. There it goes. Does not see it. He does not see it. Nidus, uh, Nidus worms can actually be killed with workers if you are able to see them. Still doesn't see it, and the Nidus worm is going to be able to finish. I think it only takes like maybe six workers to destroy a Nidus before it can actually finish. Oh, here it goes. Here they come in. Okay, so he's been worried about his front line, and he's going to just leave the game. So, again, this is, um, I guess this is kind of... Where, full cam, here we go. Yeah, okay. So this is kind of like a recurring pattern that we've seen in both of these games, is that our our players either didn't scout early and find out about expansions, or underestimated what a one basing Zerg can do. So in this situation, early scouting should have should have given him at least alarm bells so that he'd be paying attention to the areas in his base, making sure he has vision. Um, and I think he could have held off, he could have shut down those Nidus worms as they were being built as long as he had vision of his base and was willing to pull workers a bit and go take care of that. So the next game, let's see what time it is, whether or not it's time for the play of the week. I think we're going to squeeze in one more game before we get the, to the play of the week. Let's do that. Let's do that. We're going to watch one more game by Anguish. And this game that we're going to watch is actually really cool because he's not a master level player that Anguish is playing against. I believe he was platinum. or Yeah, I think he's platinum actually. But he had better base vision. And so that presented a challenge for the Nidus worm that's about to drop. So what we're going to do is go ahead and, and check it out. Give me one second, guys. Quit this replay. Mm -hmm -hmm. Again, if you guys are uh, watching live on Twitch, please say hi in the chat. If you have any suggestions or anything, let me know. Um, hmm, what else? What else? Where are we? Okay, so... Man, I really wish they had replays better uh, organized in StarCraft. Oh, well. Okay, so this is going to be another one by uh, Anguish. Let's load it up. Excuse me. All right. Man, it is really hot in here. <laughs> okay, so this is game three of our Nidus Rush Spectacular. We have in the bottom left, the Protoss in red, apart. Both saying good luck to each other. Top right, we have in the blue, which he seems to favor, J-Ran or Anguish, the Nidus rushing, Nidus rushing beast. Um, so again, we've got a PVZ very uh, common on this map, is to build your wall in this location here. We see a, this pylon will extend its influence all through this area. And then all we need is a forge, a gateway, and one more pylon. And it leaves a nice little choke right here. Put a couple uh, cannons behind and the player is usually safe. Now Apart is doing a really good job here. Better than both of our other players. He sent out that initial probe right away. Because again, he's got to find out if we have a fast expand from our Zerg player. If we saw a very quick expand, then we can generally th guess that our Zerg player has to invest in his economy. So there's not necessarily going to be the same kind of early pressure 
or the same early uh, layer, is it, layer tech, that we would have to worry about. So he's doing a really good job scouting around. Uh, at the same time, uh, we've got Anguish. We know he's run in. I think he actually stole some minerals here. He saw that, no, there's not a fast expand yet, but this pylon tells everything. This pylon tells that our player is trying to go for a forge fast expand. I think he's actually going for a nexus first. Wow. Okay, again, that feels really risky to me when we don't know what our Zerg player is doing, especially a one gas, one spawning pool, and no expansion. I don't, th I don't know about that. That seems really risky. But anyways, he's making his decision. Perhaps he, he obviously knows better than me. He thinks he's going to get this wall finished well before any Zerglings attack. We already see that uh, Anguish is starting to get his overlords in position for the inevitable Nidus Worm. Mm. Now, interesting thing about this map. I want, I want you to imagine in your mind, if you were this overseer, overlord right here, if you were him, if you're this guy right here, where would you like to put down that Nidus Worm? Well, this area here looks good, right? Now, if you were to run past the back line here, you're going to tip it off. All these probes are going to see. This is kind of a difficult map to get behind, because this would be really nice, right? But our problem with uh, what our Protoss player here has done, and Anguish uses, uses some really creative uh, thinking to, to make this still happen. The problem with our Protoss player is that because of that fast expansion, uh, no overlords are getting back through here. So you can't really sneak down the back. You can't sneak through here to try and get a Nidus here. So instead he's going to do something really, really cool. Alright, let's not worry about that just yet. What do we see here? We see a hatch being morphed into a lair. Okay, so if our player apart was a little more active. Okay, he's s sending his worker. I hope he's going to find this out. Let's, let's, f oh, where is he? There he is. Hold on. You. All right. Is he just going to take the, the tower? Yeah, it looks like he's just taking the tower. Um, I think we need to find out, We again, we need to find out if there's been an expansion. And notice here that Anguish is kind of blocking up the front, or he was anyway. I think he wants to deny that scout because he does not want that scout to see that he hasn't expanded. But the scout sees it. He hasn't expanded. He's going up into the main and he's... Oh, did he see it? Hold on. I think he saw it. Yeah. Okay. So our Protoss player now knows that there is a lair. And look at what he's doing. His building placement is really good. His building is giving him vision of this area here. He's got vision of all sides of his base, which is really, really good. Um, and that's what's going to make it really tough for this Overlord to drop a Nidus Worm. Because as soon as that Nidus Worm has been seen, we're going to pause for a quick second. As soon as that Nidus Worm gets seen, you pull six to eight workers, and the workers can shut it down before it even starts. What do you think is going on here? This, my friends, is going to be an overseer. You might be wondering, if he can't get into a parts base, why would he keep trying with an overseer? Ah, let's find out, friends. Overseer is morphing, and there's a nice little ability that the overseer has. Let's, uh, let's just watch his action, because it's some pretty cool stuff. So the overseer now comes in and drops this. All right. So now, to our, to our, um, to a part, this may just be one of his units. But once he gets vision of that same spot I mentioned earlier, right in the back. Now we're going to look at his camera, and he cannot see that there is a Nidus in his base. He can't see it. Beautiful, incredible play. If the Nidus worm is going to get to finish, he's loaded up. And unloading. Oh, he's going to pull his army. He sees him now. Pulling the workers out. It's not going to be enough, I don't think. 
And in the meantime, um, Anguish, I was going to call him Nidus. <laughs> in the meantime, Anguish has taken a second base, or at least started one. But this base here is going to fall. He's going to be able to take out the gateways. I love how he's running his changeling in among the other guy's army. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my god. Alright, so I think he's just going to clean this army up with the roaches uh, shouldn't be a problem and we see a GG well played okay so uh, huh, full camera here we go so that was cool right I mean that was awesome um, well uh, well well jobbed anguish well jobbed um, I'm just gonna quit this because we're gonna be jumping into the play of the week so uh, what did we learn we learned a few things if you're up against a Zerg player, again, we already talked about the one base Zerg. So if you see a one base Zerg, alarms should go off. Um, if you, if those alarms go off, like for example, we just saw with our last player apart, um, put your buildings in your base so that you have vision of your entire base. Now, Anguish was really sneaky. I mean, that spot was really, 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 really hard to drop a Nidus, uh, Nidus Worm, but with the Overseer and a Changeling, beautiful stuff, man. Gorgeous. Love it. Um, let's see the what Furious Play of the Week. Um, hold on. Let me just uh, minimize this. Sorry, guys. I'm still kind of getting used to the uh, this whole thing. Oh, return to game. Oh. Okay, here we go. So, um, yeah, so it is only me, Agamemnon, on episode 7 of StarCraft Happy Hour. But, Furious was at the, is at a basketball game today, took his laptop, found a play of the week, emailed it to me right in the middle of the game, because he's such a champ, and so we're going to watch it together right now, okay? Let's do it. Here's the Furious play of the week. Three... Okay, guys, so I just got to load it up. I got it ready here in a second. Full screen. There we go. Welcome to the Furious Play of the Week, guys. It's a little choppy. Sorry about that. Let's see what uh, Furious has in store for us. Hello, friends. Furious Geo here from SC2 Mistakes, bringing you the Furious Play of the Week. Uh, the play this week is a game that myself, Furious George, and Agamemnon played against each other. We were doing a custom match and we were obscene some uh, matches with Anguish and uh, Mike. So this is, uh, as you can tell, fairly late into the game, 14 minutes into the game. Uh, I actually have done a proxy Stargate into a very strange natural expansion beside my opponent. Um, I've done a little bit of damage. Uh, on his natural, or I guess that would be his main, um, but that's about it so far. It was a little fail, I wasn't using my voice very correctly, but that's another story. So basically, as a counter, Agamemnon had snuck a probe in my base um, at the very start of the game, never moved it, and then is now going to throw down some pylons and cannon rush, which is quite, a, one thing that's really amazing is he's doing it at the exact same time as I am throwing down some pylons. So, it actually takes me a while to notice because when I look, you're not going to be able to see, we'll look at my camera, but from all I can see is I've just thrown down um, some cannon, uh, some pylons back in my base. So this one is Agamemnon's, these ones here are mine, which is a lot of pylons, but I'm a bit ready to, <laughs> I'm macroing here, so macroing heavy, look at all the cash I got. Now here come his cannons. Um, now at this point, it's funny because usually I'd be really concerned with this, but as you'll, I'm gonna leave it on mine, uh, my view. I don't know yet. I still don't know. I still don't know. And I go down, and oh god! <laughs> so I can see now that the cans are coming down. 
so I immediately get all my probes. I think I only lose maybe two probes, which is pretty good. And if you didn't know already, I'm fairly, I'm just starting to play Protoss a bit. Stalkers are fantastic against cannons. So here's what we're going to use as the play of the week. And just a little Stalker Micro. Um, they handle, they can get can get rid of cannons like crazy. So I'm just pulling them back, pull back. Um, I do lose some, but Agamemnon's still pushing. I mean, this is a this is about at the end of this, he's put down about ten cannons, I think. So just warp in another round of stalkers and uh, handle these uh, cannons fairly easily. I only lost uh, a couple probes and maybe four four stalkers. If I microed it even better, then. Um, would have been able to uh, take out even or lose even less stalkers. So there you go. If you're ever having to deal with some uh, cannon pressure, just get some stalkers out and you'll be fine. That's the Furious Play of the Week, and uh, we're gonna throw it back over to. Uh okay, so I think he was saying that he's worth throwing it back to Agamemnon. So we're gonna run his uh, outro video. Alright guys, so that was the play of the week. Uh, nice uh, stalker micro there. I actually think I was when I was watching that, I think he only lost like maybe one or two stalkers at the most. Very impressive. Thanks for yours. Really enjoyed that. Alright, so let's check our time guys. Let's see how much time we have left. Oh, we've got a bit more time left. Alright, so if you guys are in the chat, do you want to see some pro replays that I'm just going to randomly pick or do you want to watch more Nidus rushing? Let me know. I'm going to get uh, StarCraft up and running. <laughs> Actually, yeah, let's bring StarCraft up. No, nope, I have to exit StarCraft because I don't have... Oh, do I have any more? Alright, we're going to pull up another replay. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Okay, so let's. I, I kind of wouldn't mind watching another um, another Nidus rush. I think I'd like to see that. Um, we have more actually from Anguish. Let's see. That was Nidus Nidus rush ladder two. Let's watch. Okay, let's watch three because we watched two of his Nidus rushes. Um, let's watch a couple more. Let's watch a couple more. Uh, this is against, uh, oh, this Panda Mafia. Ah, oh, I think I've seen this one. I'm not sure, though. I'm not sure. Again, thanks for coming by, guys. If you'd like to have your, um, your stuff shown on StarCraft Happy Hour, or you have any questions, you want help or anything, Send your replays to info at sc2mistakes.com. Um, we love your replays. Keep them coming. All right, so let's bring up the production tab. Bring up the name tab. Ooh, I love these colors. Okay. So in the top right, we have Panda Mafia. He is our purple Protoss. And in the bottom left, we have our friend Anguish. He is in teal. And there he is. And he is a Zerg. If you cannot tell that he is a Zerg, it's a good thing you're watching this video. Alright, so. We've seen Anguish do two different types of... I think, yeah, two. Two different types of cannon rushing. Uh, uh sorry, cannon rushing. Of Nidus rushing. We've seen him uh, use uh, just a standard Overlord when his opponent was not scouting well. And we've been able to see him use... Um, changelings. Boom, right? Like, that's amazing. You know what, guys? I'm going to put on a little bit of music, because let's, let's hear a little background music, okay? Let's just do it. There we go. I don't know if you can hear it, but whatever. Uh, okay, so we see Panda Mafia is, has been paying attention to the last couple videos, or last uh, little bit there. He's sending out an initial worker. Look, he's checked for... He sees there's no fast expansion. 
Hey, there's our music. There's no fast expansion. He's going around like this, and this is really smart. This is this is some good scouting. He sees the early gas. Um, he's looking for the spawning pool. At the same time, we have Anguish doing a very similar thing. He sees the pylon going down at the choke again. That means that our our uh, Protoss player would like to take a forge fast expand. And he's going to box that uh, pylon to death, it looks like. I think he's only boxing with his left hand, or his right one. Well, he's only connecting with his right hand, that's for sure. Okay, we're still going to throw down that forge. Um, he's going to try and see if he can get rid of uh, the scout. So, I think it, it seems to me like Anguish is pretty comfortable with walking away at this point, where... Um, he knows exactly what his opponent is up to. He knows there's going to be a forge fast expand. And so that's pretty much all the information he needed. Also, he's got a forward overlord in this position so that he can see any troop movement or if he goes to take it third early. And it might also help to throw down a Nidus. All right. Now, Pandemafu is being really good. Again, remember we talked about this is checking out, finding out when whenever your opponent's going to be putting down that uh, his that is natural if he's a Zerg player. Still sees that we're almost four minutes into the game. There's no second. He checked for a third, which is really good thinking because he figures, hey, if he hasn't taken his natural, maybe he's tricking me. And he's gone for a third. He's even checking down at this location. So Panda Mafia knows that something is up. He knows something's up. And that's that's great. That's exactly what I was talking about, is that even if you don't know exactly what's going on, is that at least you figured out, hey, my opponent is not expanding. He's sitting on one base. There's something coming. And that is the first step to helping you ward off the dreaded Nidus Worm. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Panda Cam. So he doesn't know, but um, Anguish has now taken a second. That's okay. In the main, Anguish is now transforming into a lair, and as soon as that lair tech is done, I think we're going to see... Are we going to see a Nidus network? Where is it? There we go. I'm not really sure. I, I'd be really interested. I don't know if Anguish has is able to let us know why he does this. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Okay, so Anguish is putting his Nidus network far away from his main base so that even if his opponent scouts into the base, uh, hopefully he won't see uh, this. So in order to do that, the Overlord is creating or generating creep. I'm going to guess that's why. These guys are all getting ready to go. Uh, let's take a look at his camera. We're going I want to see what he knows. Okay, so this is Panda Mafia. Again, there's a dead zone right here. This is a very common dead zone. Uh, that's probably the only place he's going to be able to drop one without being seen. So let's go back to the everyone cam. And sure enough, there it goes. Okay, so Panda Mafia does not see it. He does not see it. Okay, so this is this is again uh, something I really think would Panda Mafia would benefit from is if if you see a one basing Zerg, you think that there's some kind of craziness going on. Um, spread your buildings out in your base. Get vision. Put pylons everywhere. Make sure you can see everything in your base because that little bit of vision is what's going to help you to um, make sure you can hold off that Nidus Worm. Again, you don't need a big m army to hold off a Nidus Worm. All you need is a few probes. But you need to see when it goes down, right? So that was, that was his mistake. He did a few things really correct. He scouted early. He kept an eye on expansions from the Zerg player. Um, he even did a, a good forge fast expand. That would, Everything went well, but did not have vision in his base. So that's what was missing. I think we're going to watch one more 
let's just watch one more. I feel like watching one more. Let's watch one more. Uh, I want to see one more Nidus rush. Could could Anguish possibly lose? Let's find out. Um, just gonna have to exit here, and I'll re reload. Okay, so now I think we're gonna watch. This is Anguish Nidus Rush number four. Oops, don't rename it. Here we go. Okay, and this is versus... Oh, wow, he was matched up against a gold player. So he is in Masters, um, and he's playing against a gold player, but funny, from the games we've watched, some of the best defense has not come from the Masters, uh, but has actually come from lower-level players. Which is very strange. You gotta scout, you Masters. Scout, scout, scout. Alright, this is our last game of the evening, guys. Thanks for coming out. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let's introduce our players. We have, in the bottom left, in the teal once more, Anguish. And in the top right, we have our Terran player. We have another Terran by the name of Nels, and he likes to wear red. There he is. Okay, again, um, Anguish is moving out with his uh, Overlord as an initial scout. And uh, this is going to be interesting because I actually don't think I've seen this game. I don't really know what's going to happen, but it feels like we're going to see a repeat. So what we're going to look for is when Nels actually sends out his first scout. His first worker scout. And we're going to see how does Anguish drop a Nidus. Can he drop a Nidus? That's the question. So Anguish is very good with, and, and again, this is, uh, I mean, I can't emphasize this as much, as enough, I should say. Um, you know, when you're doing a build, when you have something in mind, you might kind of think, okay, I'm just going to do my build. I'm just going to focus on my build. But Anguish is really good at, even though he knows he wants to deny this rush, he's going to scout. He's going he's gonna to scout right off the bat. Okay, little worker harass there, see if we can shut that down. He's not going to get this guy, is he? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! Get him! Oh, come on! Oh, man! Okay, that was really close. That SCV survived with five five health hit points. Um, Nels is doing really good, actually. He's, uh, he's going to take a look. Going to go see what Anguish is doing. We're going to find out if Anguish has taken an early expansion, which I'm going to say he hasn't because he wants an Nidus rush you. So we see no early expansion. Again, we see one gas. We see a spawning pool going down. Nels is fully aware of that. We have our double overlords moving in as per usual. I'm not sure if that's actually how you say that expression. Is it per usual, as per usual, or just as usual? I think it's just as usual. Anyway, so Nels is hanging out in here. I think he just wants to get as much information as he can, and he's going to go out. I think, is he going to check to see if there's an expansion? No. No. But he may have... I th I'm sure he would have seen it just by going by. Another scout coming from Anguish. I know this may not seem like the most exciting stuff in the world, guys, but this is some important stuff. Even though Anguish wants to Nidus Rush, he needs to know if his opponent is just going for a strong one base push. Oh, I'm such a retard. <laughs> He's just going back to mine. <laughs> I had it all backwards. Oh my goodness. Oh well. Anyways, uh, looks like Nels lost that, uh, that scout. Uh, on this map, there's a nice dark spot. I think it's here. Let's take a look. Uh, nope, we've got vision all at the back there. We have a dark spot here, and um, what else? What else is dark? And here, and maybe here, I'm not sure. Let's take a look at everyone camp. So where is... Oh, Anguish is over here. Alright, so, Anguish is on the left side. I'm going to guess he's going to drop it right here. That's what I'm going to guess. Uh, so what information does our Terran player have? He's staying on one base, so he's not getting ahead of himself. Now, this is different. All the other videos we've watched, we've seen uh, fast expansion. So, 
Our Terran player may have only seen that there was a one base, and um, trying to play it a little more uh, conservative, maybe. Alright, so, um, this orbital command, uh, when do we get that scanner sweep at 50? This scanner sweep would be really, really helpful if he, ca if he can't do anything else to find out when this layer is finished. Or if the layer attack is even going down. Oh my god, the exact same thing. The exact same thing. So, layer attack, you gotta know. Like, if you're playing against a Zerg player, you gotta know when that layer attack is finished. And actually, after this video, I'm gonna just tell you guys a little bit about what you can learn about s about your, your Zerg opponent just from scouting that one building. Okay, so break that down. It'll only take a couple minutes, but I want to kind of drop that on you. Okay, still some really active scouting, which is really good. He's gonna find out there is expansions gone down, but it, at this point, it doesn't matter because that's a really late expansion. Oh, I think th oh the Nidus worms. He can see it too. He has vision of this night swarm. Go get the night swarm. Get it. Oh my God, he's not looking at his mini map. Oh, he's not looking at his mini map. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. He had an army right there. Does he have siege mode? If he had that tank in siege mode, it would have taken that out. Oh man, what a tragedy. What an absolute tragedy. I think he might be able to clean up those lings, but even the queen is coming in. Oh yeah, she's going to take out that factory. Oh yeah. Our SCVs are under attack. SCVs are... Oh, they all got cleaned up by the lings. Oh my goodness. These are some tough lings, man. <laughs> Planting creep tumors and going home. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. Okay, so... I think he just des he just destroyed his opponent's economy, though. And I think we're going to see GG's. What else is going on here? What is this? Oh, spine crawlers. <laughs> the guy's got three supply. Look, he needs spine crawlers. Yeah, picking away at everything. Come on, buddy, just GG. Yeah, he rage quit. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. So, uh, Anguish did it again. This time we have another lesson that we need to learn. Um, Nels had vision of his base. He even had vision of where the uh, Nidus was dropping. But you notice when you look at... I'm just going to actually show you the game one more time. Hold on. Here we go. Why don't you look at the mini-map? When you look in this area right here, if you look on the left, you're going to see this big red dot okay that red dot it should you should see that red dot I mean like you should be in the habit when you're playing of glancing at your minimap looking at your minimap every once in a while looking at your minimap because as soon as that red dot pops up in your base you need to check out what it is right and as soon as you see it, his army was like, it was, was so close, right? was right there, right? Able, just, he could have got it. He could have got it. And that Nidus would have gone down, and this would have been a very different game. Very, very different. Um, I think it would have been different. Maybe he would have nidus him somewhere else. I don't know. But the point is, watch the mini-map. And I think if you change your colors, I'm not sure that you're able to change the colors on that and so you get that contrast, right? Mine's always red and green, red and green. Um, okay, so I want to tell you one more thing before we close up shop tonight. Uh, it's only going to take two seconds. If you're trying to scout your opponent and he's a Zerg, um, just looking at his main base is going to tell you something really important. So, uh, let me... <laughs> let me find it for you. Where is it? I even put a bookmark in here and everything, and now I don't know where it is. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, the interesting thing about Zerg um, upgrades is that by watching the main building, you know, their hatchery, the hatchery can either be, it starts off as a hatchery, then it becomes a lair, then it becomes a hive. If you see that your opponent only has hatcheries, then you only have to worry about Zerglings, Banelings, Roaches, Queens. That's it. 
That's all he can build. All right. As soon as you see that layer goes down, and the layer just looks like a kind of a bigger, taller version of it. As soon as you see that layer, and that's why it's good to use, if you're a Terran player, use your scan if you can't get into his base. Just see if he's built a layer. If he's upgraded to a layer, you now have to consider that he may be able to go for Hydralisks, Mutalisks, Corruptors, and Infestors. And, once he has a layer, he can get a Nidus Network. So, if you see a one base player that's got a lair, some uh, uh, some stuff should be going off in your head. You have a, maybe you're gonna have quick mutas, maybe you're gonna have uh, nidus drop, but you should know that that's what's coming down the pipe. And thirdly, and this is especially for Protoss players, if you see a hive, now a hive is just like a ramped up lair. I mean, I wish I had pictures of it, but. Uh, go Google it, look for pictures of what a hive looks like. Um, hive means that you're going to be dealing with broodlords and ultralisks. And broodlords, broodlords, broodlords. So basically, if you see that your opponent is still on lair tech, might be a pretty good time if you have a decent army to attack before he gets to hive. Because once he gets to hive, he's going to have broodlords. So. Just by watching that building and watching his expansions, watching your minimap and keeping an eye on your base, Anguish should not be able to do this to you. He should not be able to Nidus you. So thanks for coming out, guys. I'm going to figure out how to do our uh, exit, uh, exit screen here. <laughs> Hang in, because I know you want to see it. Let's exit here, exit there. Mm -hmm. All right, so... All right, guys, goodbye. This has been Episode 7 of StarCraft Happy Hour. Thanks for coming out, guys. You're the best. I'm going to hit 3 in a second. Bye. Thanks again.